Good morning. The case we have chosen is a case about jurisdictional immunities of states. As an example, we have taken the Germany versus Italy and Greece intervening case. So let's first talk about the subject of the dispute. As my colleague Fernando will explain later, between 2004 and 2008, the Italian Republic brought different claims against the Federal Republic of Germany. Those claims were brought to the Italian civil courts that had to issue a number of judgments in which they found Germany responsible for a series of war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by the German Reich during World War II. For those crimes, Italy ordered Germany to pay compensations to Italian plaintiffs who had fallen victim to such crimes. Those compensations are, for example, the Ferrini versus Germany case compensation, the Mantegi versus Germany case compensation, and the Prosecutor versus Max Joffet Milde compensation. Germany did not dispute the substance of the fact, but the 23 of December of 2008, Germany filed an application instituting proceedings against Italy before the International Court of Justice, which is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. What Germany was arguing is that in the recent years, Italian judicial bodies have repeatedly disregarded the jurisdictional immunity of Germany as a sovereign state, thus violating international law. But what is exactly jurisdictional immunity? Let's give a brief definition. According to a general rule of customary international law, states enjoy immunity from the jurisdiction of other states. The International Court of Justice has held that state immunity derives from the principle of sovereign equality of states, which, as Article 2.1 of the Charter of the United Nations makes clear, is one of the fundamental principles of the international legal order. Italy, on the other hand, emphasized that the underlying crimes, crimes against humanity and war crimes, were violations of jus congens, law that is binding upon states regardless of any treaty, and since whose congens rules always prevail over any inconsistent international law rule, the later rule of immunity of Germany must be given away. But what is exactly whose congens? Let's give again a brief definition of it. So, whose congens is the body of elementary rules or peremptory principles from which no derogation is permitted, those norms recognized by the international community as a whole as being fundamental to the maintenance of an international legal order and that can operate to invalid a treaty or agreement between states to the extent of the inconsistency with any such principle or norms. Let's now see if the International Court of Justice had or no jurisdiction of the case, which was the first step of this case. So, the application was brought under the terms of the European Convention for the Peaceful Settlement of Disputes of the 29th of April of 1957. Convention that was ratified by Italy the 29th of January of 1960 and ratified by Germany on the 18th of April of 1961 and none of the two parties has denounced this ratification. So under Article 1, the high contracting parties shall submit to the, su to the judgment of the International Court of Justice all international legal disputes which may arise between them, including, in particular, those concerning any question of international law, as is stipulated in the letter B of the European Convention, and in which falls this case. 
Also, the applicability of the European Convention is not excluded by the provision of Article 27, which enunciates certain time limits, in which the provisions of this convention shall not apply to disputes relating to facts or situations prior to the entry into force of this convention as between the parties of the dispute. So let's make a timeline to understand if it has or not jurisdiction under this Article 27. As we have already indicated when we specified the subject of the dispute, all claims which have been introduced against Germany before Italian courts related to the occurrence of World War II, before the peaceful settlement of dispute was ratified and into force by the two countries, Italy and Germany. However, the prosecuting, however, the prosecuting instituted against Italy do not deal with the substance of those claims about World War II. Germany's objective was to obtain a finding from the court that to declare that the claims falling within the domestic jurisdiction of Italian court constituted a breach of international law. And those claims were between 2004 and 2011. So, those will after the European Convention enter into force as between the parties, although the court accordingly has jurisdiction to deal with the dispute. Now, we are going to focus on the argument that Italy used against Germany. It was based on various issues that you are going to understand properly along this explanation. First of all, we have words related with jurisdiction in the application. As we know, the first step was that our demanding state, Italy, looking at everything from a perspective full of anger and thirst for revenge, demanded to Germany for all the injuries it caused. But things are not so easy in the field of international law. Regarding the jurisdiction on this case, we are look at this through three main points. The first one is related with the application. On the other hand, our second point is related with customary international law. Our third point is related with the European Convention, which is not excluded. The application is made under the European Convention for the Peaceful Settlement of Disputes of 1957, which was ratified by Italy and Germany, both in 1960. On the other hand, we find the Article 1 of this European Convention that provides the high contracting parties shall submit to the judgment of the International Court of Justice all international legal disputes which may arise between them. In Article 27, the provisions of this convention shall not apply to a. disputes related to facts or situations prior to the entry into force of this convention as between the parties to the dispute, b. dispute concerning questions which in international law. On the other hand, we have issues of admissibility. The first point here is about no need for exertion of local remedies. The second point is related with no need for prior exception of diplomatic negotiation. And the third point is related with no jurisdiction of the court in the justice. Germany does not act in the exercise of its right of diplomatic protection in favor of its nationals. It acts only on its behalf. In Article 33 of the United Nations Charter, does not require states to find solutions to an actual dispute by all the methods listed therein before turning to the court. In the third point, the personal dispute is not covered by any of the jurisdictional clauses of the Treaty of Nice, Article 227. At the beginning, the parties that were having a dispute with Germany were three. The first group was composed of young Italian men from the civil society. 
which were arrested in Italian soil and brought back to Germany to perform forced labor during the Second World War. The second group was constituted by members of the Italian forces which were made prisoners by the German army and used as well as forced labor during the war. The third group was composed by victims of the massacres that the German forces committed in Italy in the last days of the, of the war. Sometime after, a fourth group had a contentious with Germany as well. A group of Greek citizens which demanded the German armies for similar acts that were carried out on the Greek soil. This case was taken to by the Italian courts in order to avoid impunity. Germany answered by stating that although they were not the only responsible of these atrocities, they already acknowledged in the past their deep regret for the actions that happened during the Second World War. However, they claimed that the dispute that the Italian court were carrying out against Germany were not legal. They based their opposition with so many reasons. First of all, Italy and Germany signed a peace treaty in 1961 which said that Italy and all the other victorious countries had already settled down all the revision of war. Based on this, Germany stated that no further reclamations on war could be demanded. Second, and most importantly, Germany claimed that Italy was violating the sovereign immunity. But, what is sovereign immunity? We can define it as the perfect equality and absolute independence of sovereign state, which means that, as the state is considered the highest sovereign international scene, no claims can be brought against him in the tribunals of another state, mainly because the judge does not have jurisdiction over other states as equality between states is one of the main bases of the international community. The Italian government claimed against this last argument by four main arguments. They started by claiming that the volume of the violence was so big that the sovereign immunity should be restricted. While the court acknowledges the seriousness of the violations committed by Germany, they said that no previous cases of restriction of sovereign immunity existed due to this, which made them reject this claim. The second argument of Italy was that the rules that were violated by Germany had the EU's common status, taking into account that the EU's common prevails over other inconsistent rules of international law, such as sovereign immunity. The court decided that the EU's common rules do not conflict with the sovereign immunity as they refer to different matters, which means that this argument was also dismissed. In his third argument, Italy claimed that the Italian courts had the right to violate German immunity because it was the last resort to secure compensation for the victims. The court also rejected this claim by saying that the Italian government was making this argument from scratch, as there was no precedent of a violation of state sovereignty based upon these grounds. This argument was also dismissed. Last but not least, the Italian government said that under customary international law, sovereign immunity does not protect acts occasioning death or injuries. He supported this claim by invoking the, the Article 11 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which states that a state can claim jurisdiction over a clause which relates to, the, to redress the injury of a person. The Commission answered by acknowledging the article, but by adding that in virtue of the Article 31 of the same Convention, which, express, which expressively states that nothing in this Charter can be used to limit the sovereignty of a state for the action of the armies in another country, their argument was also invalid and though dismissed. Let's recap. Italy allows civil claims to be brought against Germany based on violations of international humanitarian law committed by the German Reich during World War II between 1943 and 1945, seeking reparations for Nazi crimes in fact. Referring to the issue of 7,000 Italian soldiers detained by the German army after Italy declared war to Germany, there are deportation and forced labor to be brought against Germany in front of Italian courts. Regarding the question whether there were any exceptions to the state immunity that could be potentially used by Italy in its favor, there is principle of jurisdictions which include prohibition on the use of force, the law of genocide, principle of racial non-discrimination, crimes against humanity, and the rules prohibiting trade in slaves or human trafficking. A relevant essay made by American scholars provide that states should not be allowed to claim immunity 
if they violate it, just caution norm. However, and as my colleagues already explained, the facts of the case above, Italy committed violations of, obli of its obligations under international law, in that Italy has failed to respect the jurisdictional immunity which Germany enjoys under international law by taking measures of concern against Villa Vigoni, which is German state property, Italy committed violations of German jurisdictional immunity and two, violated German state sovereignty. According to international law, every state is absolutely immune from jurisdiction of foreign court without any exception, which means that Italy had no right to undertake such measures against Germany. This controversial case concerning jurisdictional immunities of state knew and end on 3rd February 2012. In fact, the International Court of Justice gave the judgment that Italy did not carry out its international obligations toward Germany and violated in many times the fundamental principles of international law. The court decision, by 12 votes to 3, Italy has violated its obligations to respect the immunity which Germany enjoys under international law by allowing civil crimes to be brought against it based on violations of international humanitarian law committed by the German Reich between 1934 and 1945. By 14 votes to 1, Italy has violated its obligations to respect the immunity which the Germany enjoys under international law by taking measures of concert against Villa Vigoni, which is just German property. By 14 votes to 1, Italy has violated its obligation to respect the immunity which the Federal Republic of Germany enjoys under international law by declaring enforceable in Italy decision and decisions of Greek courts based on violations of international humanitarian law committed in Greece by the German Reich. Unanimously, the court rejects all other submissions by, by the Federal Republic of Germany. In November 2008, both countries jointly addressed the painful experience of the World War II and look forward to strengthen the relationships among both countries.